Hello, this is a video to explain your criteria BC in mechanics, grade nine physics. Uh, here's your OneNote page. At the bottom here, you'll see uh, three, it says extra guidance. They're the three videos that I've made about how to do a couple of different things. So do make sure you watch them. They have tips and tricks and helpful hints in them. So make sure you watch them. Um, the, the kind of the overall task is that you're going to design and complete an experiment where you test the effect of mass on the acceleration of a small trolley down a ramp. Um, and then you need to do all of the parts of the Word document attached and um, it, there's a video there that you can utilize. So let's open up the Word document and let's talk through what, what you're going to do. Here you can see the intro, um, the idea of what your experiment is going to do, outline of it, you're going to plan and, and collect data and then evaluate what's been going on. This is your criteria B rubric. Do make sure you use that. Your criteria C rubric, same, make sure you use it. So um, going through here, oh, um, acceleration of a vehicle is our title, our topic that we're going to study. And I've already given you a research question. To what extent does the mass of a small trolley affect the acceleration down a ramp? That's a fine question, but I really think if you want more marks, if you want the, the, the eights, the sevens and the eights, that question needs a little bit more detail in it. What type of trolley are we talking about? What mass? What different masses are we going to do? What's the angle of the ramp, the length of the ramp? So more clarifying details would make that better. The next section is your introductory research, your background reading. Um, you're going to also, in this, you're going to include a few different things. So um, you're going to explain some formula. Um, we're going to want some F equals MA in there. We're going to want... Um, you're going to need to do some research into the energy. So you're going to have to do GPE and then KE. Yeah. Um, you're going to need the acceleration equation. Um, these two are essential. This is if you want a 7-8. Um, also, if you want the 7, 8, you need to introduce the, the why. What's the relevance of this experiment? Oh, what have I done? What's the relevance of this experiment? So who would be interested to know the outcome? So who might utilise your results? Um, remember that you should be researching this stuff on the internet. You should be looking stuff up. You should be explaining it. And therefore you should be providing me with references. I've suggested three. I think two is a good number. One probably says you didn't do a lot of research. Um, two is two's, two's where I expect you to be at. Um, I don't think people should be going above three uh, websites or sources. Ideally, you use books, or if you can find it, like PDFs of information, rather than... Um, I'm not able to move my... Oh, there we go. Rather than um, all websites, I just find websites that it's harder to reference them well. Uh, then you make a hypothesis. If the independent variable... So from your question, the independent variable is the mass of the trolley. If the mass of the trolley increases, then what effect do you think that will have on the acceleration and why? So your background research that you did here is going to form your why. You think that the mass will increase the acceleration or you think the mass will decrease the acceleration. Why? Explain it to me. Um, then you're going to fill out some details. Please have a play with formatting. Like this, once you've said what the independent variable is, that, that brackets and that brackets, they don't need to be there. And these lines don't need to be there. They just need to disappear it needs to read like a project um, I'm just these are things are in here to help you out 
Same here, look, this, this is all about, oh, sorry, not that bit. So the variables, the first one you have to talk about is the independent variable, yeah? I've given you some hints of what you're going to say in that. What is the independent variable? How many, what are the increments going to be and why did you pick them? How are you going to achieve them? And how many repeats are you going to do of each? But write that as a paragraph and get rid of all of this and write it as a proper paragraph. Get rid of that, yeah? Make it look smart. Same with dependent variable. What is it and how will it be measured? So the dependent variable is acceleration. So you're going to have to talk in detail about how you will find, how you will calculate acceleration. What things will you need to measure and how will they be measured? And then again, get rid of that stuff once you've done it. Um, then you're going to do control variables. What things need to be kept the same? I've mentioned a few later in this video. I'm going to show you the experiment setup and you'll understand a few of the control variables, but things like if you change the car or you change the car wheels, that will have an effect on the acceleration. So that would need to be controlled, wouldn't it? The car wheels. What effect would it have on the result? If you had a wheel with more friction, then the acceleration would be less. So how will you control it? You'll use the same car with the same wheels, not changing them. Um, I've suggested here six control variables. If you've got four, then you're okay. Diagram, again, watch, watch later in this video, I'll show you the setup and you can create a diagram from it. You'll also see in that video, this later part of this video, the materials you need and you'll you're gonna be able to do your method. And I want as much detail as possible. I also want you to explain what you're gonna do with your results. So once you've got your results, what processing will you do and what graph will you create as a result of it? Again, this is extra information for you. So once you've done it, get rid of it so that it looks smart. Um, think about safety. There's not a great deal of safety on this. Um, the trolley has some mass. It can fall on people. That's a safety precaution. It can roll off the end and people can trip on it. That's a safety precaution. And then the, the ramp is heavy. So that's definitely a safety consideration when handling the ramp and moving it around. Then you collect data. Table one is what I refer to as your raw data. So this is later in this video, I will give you a results table. That's the raw data. The process data is what you then do with it. You're gonna eventually go independent variable against dependent variable. And you're gonna plot a graph of independent variable against dependent variable. Yeah, You're going to give an example of your processing. So to go from raw data to process data, you processed the data. I want you to give an example, and e.g., show me how you did one of these. Yeah? Show me the numbers, tell me what you did and why you did it. What formulas were used and why. Um, interpreted data is another word, fancy word for conclusion. So what do your results show? So show me the path, tell me the pattern, link it to the hypothesis. Um, provide data that, uh, provide data as evidence. So don't just say what you, what happened. Provide me with numerical evidence from your thing. So normally that's the first data point and the last one. And then I want you to explain using science. So this is going to link all the way back to your background research up here and your because on the hypothesis. Hopefully you're right and therefore it's easy.
Let's tidy up a few of these bits on the way down. Good. Um, and then you do the evaluation where you evaluate the control variables. How were they, comment on them, were they kept controlled or not? Reliability of the data, were they, were they the same each time in the repeats? If they were, then they're very reliable. If there was a slight variation, then they're still fairly reliable, but big variation. If you record it and you get 10 seconds, 11 seconds and 12 seconds, that's quite good. If you got 10, 1 and 56, that doesn't seem very reliable. So this is reliable. This is not. Who knows what, if you did a next one, I'd guess that the next one would be like 11 or, or something like that. With this one, what's the next value gonna be? Who knows? So it's not reliable. I'm rubbing things out as I go along. I do expect that you will be um, pausing this video and going back over it. Um, comment on the setup of a control. So talk about one of the control ones. How is it set up? What was it? How was it measured? Talk about things that went well in the method. Um, what little tricks did we do that worked and allowed us to get a good result? Um, what things could be improved for next time, what weaknesses were there. Precision is talking about how precise our equipment was. So that's normally to do with how many decimal places. For example, if we record time as 10.12 seconds, that's quite precise. You could go 10.12439 seconds. That seems a bit excessive to me. You could do that, it would be a better result, but would it be accurate? You timed it with a stop clock and a person, it was actually a phone clock, but yeah, stop clock and a person. Um, I have a reaction time, or most people have a reaction time of 0 0.2 seconds. So it seems pointless to go to so many decimal places if the person is wrong by that much, yeah? So we could increase precision, but it might not be very uh, worthwhile based on the inaccuracy of the person. Choice of dependent variable, did, did it work? Did it allow you to see a pattern? Suitability of measurement, did we get an answer? And therefore, were we able to plot a graph? And was the equipment correct? Then you comment on your hypothesis. You've done all this before. Strengths of your hypothesis, etc. Uh, errors and improvement, areas that we can make improvements, what, what went poorly, what could be better. Um, you can also include in there, I think for 7-8, extension. So what, what would be the next experiment that you would do? So we tested different masses. Um, maybe we'd want to extend that beyond and see what, what other masses, like beyond our region, the range of masses we tested, what, what other masses could you do? And also, um, what other things would you want to do? We'd change the mass. What about changing the ramp height? How would that affect it? So we've got lots of um, extensions, I think, should be here. And then just in case you used anything else, do your work cited. Remember, this should be in MLA format. Remember that that should be then be web address, accessed, etc. Um, up the top, when we use that information in our background research, in our hypothesis, it should be then in brackets the name, yeah? Or the, the basic web address. Excellent. I think that is everything. The next part of the video, I'm going to cut to a video of me doing the experiment. And then the last part will be my results. So for your experiment you are going to see how the mass of a car affects the acceleration. Here is the car, it's a small um, science lab trolley. It has three, no, four I think, no, three wheels underneath it. Um, just free spinning, very, very low friction. Um, and then to change the mass, I have 
blue tacked some masses on top so that I can adjust the mats um, by taking these on and off. So that's how we will alter the mass of the car. Um, I'll pop the car onto a scale in a minute and find out and write down in the, um, the main part of the video the mass of the car without anything on it because obviously the car itself has a mass they're normally about 500 grams and then i have on top of it the option to add five more masses to give us our five different uh, massive cars then we roll it down a ramp we're going to have it a fixed height that's a control variable um, and again i will measure the height of the um the ramp, if I can try and show you it here in the video. Um, I'll measure the height of the ramp. In fact, I can do that right now so that you can see. The top of the ramp is, I think, at 49 centimetres. Then it will roll down the ramp. I've pre-measured these before. They are 2.5 metres long. And then to try and, obviously I don't want it dropping off the ramp at the bottom. So I've put another one there so that there's a, a smooth join, but um, there is a little bit of an error here because there is a tiny bit, I don't know if you can see it in the video, a tiny bit of a lip. So the car will bounce a little bit and lose some of its speed. Um, and then I put markers, a red marker here, and then a meter later, another red marker, and then the car can can run on. Um, <laughs> downside to these ramps is they do have a little bit of an edge to them and they're quite narrow so the car can sometimes hit the sides of the ramp on the way down. Um, what we're going to do then is we're going to allow the car to accelerate down the ramp so it'll start at the top with zero velocity and it'll accelerate down the ramp and we want to know the final velocity because remember if we're going to calculate acceleration we need to do initial velocity, which is zero, and final velocity and find the difference. Um, that will allow us to find the change in velocity and then I will time how long it goes down the ramp for as well. That will give us our time. So we have everything we need for our acceleration formula. Because acceleration is change in velocity divided by time taken. So we'll allow it to roll down the ramp, that'll be the time taken, time taken to accelerate, and then we will um, find the change in velocity, ooh fancy, going all high tech with the zoom, although actually it's, it would be nice to see the whole thing. So I will talk through in the video how we do that, but for now I'm just going to show you an example of what the car looks like going down the ramp. So. Start it with the wheels at the top, over the lip so it stays still, then as I will release it and that's when I will start the first stop clock. That stop clock will measure how long it takes to roll down the ramp. This is when I will stop the first stop clock. That's, that's the time taken to accelerate. Then with the second stop clock, I will time it from here, the start of the one metre, here, the end, and I'll use the front of the car on the red line, and I'll do that both sides so we get a full metre. That will allow me to calculate the final velocity, which is a bit confusing because there's going to be two time readings, one to find the time to accelerate, and one to find the final velocity. Yeah? But I'll talk through that all in the video, and then the car will roll off the end and come to a stop, hopefully without breaking my eye. That's, that's the experiment setup. Um, I've talked you through some of the control variables and some of the issues that might come up um, and the method. So you should be able to do a very detailed method. Okay, this is um, your, my results. Um, 
I measured the mass of the car and then added the 100 grams, 200 grams, 300 grams and 400 grams. So that's the mass of the car. Then I rolled it down the ramp and I timed it to roll down the ramp because that's when it's accelerating. So for our acceleration formula, acceleration is change in velocity over time taken. So the time taken in that acceleration formula is this. It was rolling down the ramp. This is how long it took to roll down the ramp for my three trials. Um, and then I need, we also need to know the change in velocity. Well, the velocity at the start is zero. So we timed it to travel one meter at the bottom and that gave us our, allows us to calculate our final velocity. So what we need is we need um, an average time to roll down ramp. Yeah. We need an, uh, an average time to travel one meter. Yeah. Uh, then we need our final velocity for each different mass. And then we need acceleration for each different mass. Okay. I'm going to start with acceleration. Acceleration is, is, uh, acceleration equals Final velocity divided by time taken to roll down the ramp. Yeah? There's no numbers there. Final velocity is uh, equals, oops, final velocity equals uh, distance, which was one meter, divided by time taken to travel it. Yeah? Um, and now we need averages. Oh, they should actually be for all of them, but not actually for the top one. Um, because that, that was our trials. Um, yeah, now we need some averages. Excel will do your averages for you. So you, it says, uh, so you add them up. One plus two plus three. And then you divide it by three. That's your average. And then you drag that down. And then the time taken to travel one meter. Again, same formula. It equals this plus this plus this. It's important you put it in brackets because Excel does bid mass or bod mass, whatever you call it in maths. It'll do the divide first and drag it down. Just drag it down. Remember, I was dragging, drag, selecting the cell and selecting the corner and dragging it down. Yeah. Um, we want this to always be. All of our numbers are to two decimal places or three significant figures. So I want all of our, um, you know, format the cells, pick number and make it two decimal places. Yeah. Same for all of these. Select the cells, right click, format cells, two decimal places. Yeah. And then we're, this, so this was our raw data here. That's table one. Um, and then this is going to be table two here. What we, actually going to plot a graph of. Um, so this was with the first one with, with zero mass. Then I added a hundred grams. So 0 0.10 kilograms, 0 0.20 kilograms, 0 0.30 kilograms, 0 0.40 kilograms. And I want all of these to three significant figures at uh, three decimal places. Sorry. And then these are just going to be this the answer the acceleration yeah and then we're just going to drag that down yeah there we go so now i have our table two our process data um i'm going to select the numbers and i'm going to go insert this graph here this little dot one the first one of them and here we have our graph um but it's missing some bits i need to add a uh chart Oh, it's got a chart title. You need to add axis title. Horizontal axis is mass in kilograms. And up the side, we need to add axis title vertical. But this one is um, acceleration in m slash s squared. OK, 
give it a chart title, a graph to show at mass versus acceleration. Um, then also I want on my graph, I want a trend line. Also on my graph, I want to add, um, I want to add the formula. Oh, you right, you click on the, you click on the trend line and then you right click and you format trend line and then I can display equation on chart, display R squared on chart. Yeah. Now I can copy, I can select that graph, I can copy and paste it into my Word document. I can also, I'm going to highlight the, the lines around these two tables. Um, oops, that's not all of them. Um, and then you can copy and paste table one and table two into your Word document ready. You don't need these, but these ones over here, this is your example of processing data. So you could give this line as your example, how you added up these, divided it by three to find that, added up these, divided it by three to find that, and then you did the velocity formula and the acceleration formula to find these. Because remember, after your graph, you should example, give an example of processing data.